Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be casting away the lies that have been pushed on us by the devil himself. And that is the lie of perfectly gassed, mid-length gas system, uh, M-lock hand-guarded AR-15s, laser cut plate carriers, and bump helmets. Yeah, I watched a lot of Lucas's content on T-Rex arms. And instead, we are going to embrace what God intended for us to use all along, and that is combat gassed carbine length quad rail guns, overt molly plate carriers, and full cut ballistic helmets. Using gear from an era where I think the tactical look really peaked and is where a lot of us became the men and women we are today the GWAT. This is the era of rangers wearing ranger green as God intended, as well as the creation of the finest weapon ever wielded by man, and that is the Block II. Fight me on that. And in today's video, we're going to be going over some of the guns, some of the gear that I'm using today, as well as uh, this plate carrier right here, which is a representation of an eagle MBAV. So this is not an actual Eagle MBAV. This is a reproduction from a company called LARP Tactical and a very faithful reproduction. We're going to be talking about the gear as well as the guns and just running some drills and generally having some fun. So let's get into it. All right, guys, to start things off, let's talk about the rifle that we're going to be using today. And this is a Daniel Defense M4A1. I call it the Block 2 because it is a very you know, pretty good representation of the Block II that was used by the military for the longest time during the GWAT. And this is the rifle type or type of rifle that I used when I was in Ranger Battalion. Honestly, I think that this is one of the best combat rifles or weapons ever wielded by man. They are very reliable. They are combat gassed, so they do have a little bit more kick than some of your more modern AR-15s, but a reason for that is because this thing is designed to run in very adverse conditions. This gun has performed very well in torture tests I've done in the past. And I think if you're looking for a reliable weapon that you can really trust your life with, especially here in the United States where AR-15s are the most common rifle that you could possibly get. I think that a Block 2 or an M4A1 from Daniel Defense is not a bad way to go. And this is kind of like my baby. This is my personal favorite rifle. This is like my shit hits the fan rifle. And I have it kind of set up the way I had was running it when I was Ranger Battalion. Minus I'm not using a peck on here. And the uh, EOTech setup is a little bit different. I did not have it on a riser when I was in Ranger Battalion because I wasn't really worried about passive aiming back then. But one thing I will say is that these iron sights are the uh, possibly the exact same iron sights that I used when I was in Battalion. It's kind of an odd mix up here. So this is a Knight's Armament front sight, I believe. I think it's one of their older uh, front uh, flip-up sights. And for the rear sight, this is not a Knight's Armament rear sight. This is actually a rear sight from a SCAR. I think a SCAR L. We did have SCAR Ls as well as SCAR Hs in the arms room. They were barely used. I used a SCAR L for a little bit, but never on deployment. And these are the iron sights that I was using, probably because these were the iron sights that I was given from the arms room. So kind of an odd combination, but they work. And a lot of you guys might be asking, can I use these iron sights with this EOTech right here? No, you cannot. But the idea is that if I did needed to use these uh, iron sights here, I could just take this EOTech off because there is a QD lever here and it's not such a big deal. So if this thing went down, I'll just throw this thing on the pocket, on the ground, whatever, and just flip up these iron sights and I'll be good to go. Now, as far as the pistol that I'm using today, I'm using none other than the Beretta 92FS. Um, I actually used a Beretta for a little while when I was in the military, uh, but when I went to Ranger Battalion, these were largely phased out in favor for the Glock 19, but honestly, I love shooting this pistol. This is one of my favorite handguns, and I honestly want to get more Beretta handguns. And mostly I want a Langdon Tactical Beretta, but this Beretta 92, I've had for a very long time, or a few years, not a very long time. But I have quite a few rounds on this thing. I went to the Tactical Games with this pistol and used it, and I absolutely love shooting this pistol. And again, I want to get more Berettas in the future. So probably more Beretta content coming up here, um, but overall, love this gun, and this is what we're going to be using today. Now, as far as the headgear that I'm using today, we're going to be rocking the good old Mitch 2000. So this is not a surplus Mitch 2000. This is from Protection Group Denmark, which are excellent helmets. I've personally ballistic tested these helmets before 
before and they provide really good protection. But uh, this is a pretty good representation of one of the helmets that I wore actually when I was the first in Ranger Battalion. When I first got there, I was not issued an Ops Corps because Ops Corps were kind of hard to find, especially in my large Astartes size head. So I was rocking a Mitch for a good while there with this exact helmet cover on it. Usually I don't rock helmet covers on my helmets because I just think they look cooler when they just have like no cover on them at all. But the reason I'm rocking this helmet cover is because I wanted to use this GoPro for some of the footage today and it actually routes the wire underneath this thing very well and it has this pack on the back. So that's the reason why we're wearing the helmet cover on here and uh, this is kind of very nostalgic for me. And I remember when I first got to battalion, I really wanted to be the cool guy with the ops score but was forced to wear this thing. I remember going to a school. It was the Marine Mountain Warfare Training Center in Bridgeport, California. Rangers go there a lot and act as the Op 4, but before we do the FTX and act as the Op 4, we get a lot of the mountaineering training, the same as the Marines, and I was wearing this helmet all throughout that course, and I remember one of the Marine instructors asking my squad leader, if I was some type of like big army support unit that was there. And he said, no, he was, I was his private and it was kind of funny and it was embarrassing for me, but I did eventually get an ops corps. And I remember from my first deployment, I didn't have one issue to me yet. So I had to borrow an ops corps from a private that wasn't going on that deployment because he was going to ranger school. But I did finally get an ops corps, but this is pretty similar to the setup that I was running minus a few different additions, which we'll go over here. Now, some of the additions I made to this mist right here are from Protection Group Denmark, and we're gonna go into it here with the pads. So these helmet pads right here are very good. Um, I remember as compared to the original Protection Group Denmark pads, these are a very good upgrade. Uh, the other ones were comfortable, but they absorbed water and sweat a lot. So if you took your helmet off after wearing it for a long time and then put your helmet back on, and it was, especially if it was cold outside, it would freeze your head. But these things are a little bit more, I would say like moisture wicking, but they still have the comfort that the original pads had. And I think that these are superior, far superior than a you know traditional ACH style pads. Now, another big upgrade to this helmet is this suspension system right here. Uh, this is another Protection Group Denmark product. And I have this same system in all of my helmets, even my high cut helmets. And this is far superior than the standard ACH ACH style straps, as well as the Ops Core one that I had. So I did have like an upgraded Ops Core ACH uh, chin strap when I was in because you can actually dial it in with this BOA system here on the back and you can form fit it to your head. So this really makes the ACH a much more comfortable helmet to wear. And of course you can wear your ear protection under this thing, even though it's not as comfortable as with a high cut helmet, it can still be done as we're gonna show you today. And if you really wanted to upgrade this helmet and make it into a high cut helmet, you can do that as well. Where you can send this thing off to, I would recommend sending it off to a professional who does it quite often and they'll cut it so it is a high cut helmet. I'm not gonna do it to this helmet because I like the added protection that a ACH provides and I already have high cut helmets so I don't really need to do that. And I see a lot of guys who like will post like, hey, I can't get a ballistic helmet because it's out of my price range. And I think that's silly because you can still buy, you know, um, surplus ACHs off of eBay and other places for like $100. This one's a little bit more expensive because it is new production. I think it comes in around $300, but very affordable and is cheaper than like bump helmets out there, which a lot of people uh, go to because of the price range and they just want to mount their night vision and you can mount your night vision on this thing perfectly fine and it'll stop bullets. So in my opinion, I would go over this over some type of bump helmet because you know, Kevlar beats plastic. Now we're gonna be going into the main piece that I wanna show off today, and this is the LARP Tactical MBAV, or the Modular Ballistic Armor Vest. Even though I wasn't issued this plate carrier back when I was in Ranger Battalion, I have owned one of these things before, and MBAV was actually the first plate carrier that I've ever purchased back when I was an airsofter before the Army back in 2010. I remember buying a khaki MBAV off of Op Tactical, and I absolutely love that plate carrier. And for what I'm seeing with the LARP Tactical ones, these are a very faithful reproduction, uh, pretty much down to the T. Now for some of the highlight points on this particular play carrier, it is the exact
exact same cut and fit as the original Eagle MBAV, is the exact same foam used from the original Eagle models, and it has the exact same mesh on the cummerbund and the front plate bag. From what I've seen, these plate carriers are very durable. A lot of guys have been using these Warp Tactical MBAVs and testing them out at a lot of different Milsim West events, which are 40 hour Milsim events. So if you want to test gear, that is an excellent place to do that. And these things have held up great. Now, as far as the pouches that are on this plate carrier, these are not LARP tactical pouches. These are all Eagle industry pouches that were given to me by my buddy, Justin. So big thank you to him. And as you can see, a lot of these pouches are pretty worn out. And this is the reason why LARP Tactical is making this gear because they're going to make their own reproduction pouches as well because it's getting kind of hard to find um, the legit gear that is not super worn out or for a decent price. A lot of like if you want to go and buy an original MBAV, they used to be cheap, but now they're pretty expensive, especially for ones that are in like a like new condition. So that is what LARP Tactical is doing is they're making brand new condition uh, plate carriers as well as pouches for guys who are into the more, I don't want to say retro, but going back in time a little bit when it comes to gear because Eagle Industries isn't making this stuff anymore. All right guys, so now that we've talked about the gear, let's go ahead and get into some shooting. We're gonna run some drills and all this gear using some of these old school, not gonna say old school <laughs> types of guns, classic guns from the GWAT and just gonna have some fun and see how all this stuff runs. So let's go check it out. All right guys, so for the first drill that we're gonna be running today, I totally stole this drill from another Ranger Tactical Cowboy, so all credit goes to him, but we are sitting here at 100 yards and at the bottom of the hill, I have a steel target, and we're gonna make two hits from standing, two hits from kneeling, two hits from the prone, get back into the kneeling, make two hits, and then back in the standing and make our final two hits, and we're gonna see how long it takes us. So let's get into it. I also like to note that these Eagle uh, canteen pouches make great shot time holders. Alrighty, and three, two, All right, that was 25 seconds. Let's try to do it better. All right, so it's 24-14, so a little bit better than last time. I did have, I think, one or two misses there. And one thing I will note about some of these older plate carriers is that I think newer plate carriers does this, do this better. One thing I will say about newer plate carriers, I think they do provide a little bit better uh, stock placement for you because some of these older plate carriers kind of gets in your way and I was kind of trying to fight with this thing, trying to get it out of my shoulder, but that's kind of what you get when it comes to older gear. But that is one of my favorite drills to run. Kind of gets me warmed up on the rifle. And I'll do some other drills. All right guys, so for this next drill, I have about six rounds left, both in the magazine and in the gun. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to mag dump into this dummy right here and do essentially a build drill. When I run empty, I'm gonna transition a pistol and engage each of these steel targets twice. Once I make two hits on each of these steel targets, so the one at the bottom here and these two little small poppers right here, I'm, once I make those hits, I'm going to go back to the rifle, reload, and then make two hits on each of these steel targets with a rifle. All right, 23-23. So I was a little rusty there on the Breda. Let's try that one more time. Um, try to replicate that again. I gotta load up some mag uh, bullets in here because I don't have any more five round max. All right guys, so we're gonna try running that one more time. See how it goes. Alright. 
21 seconds, so better than I did that last time. So that's a pretty fun drill. Might do that more in the future, but uh, let's do some more stuff. All right, guys, so for this next drill, it's gonna be kind of a fun one. We're gonna be starting off down there, kind of next to that rubber dummy. I'm gonna make two hits on that steel target down there, two hits on each of those small poppers right there. So two, 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 run back up the hill, and I'm gonna run up to this tire. I'm going to jump over this tire and dive behind it using it as cover and then I'm going to engage each of those steel targets twice again using the tire for cover. So <laughs> I totally don't make these up on the fly. Um, this is a well-proven uh, test made by operators all around the world and uh, definitely just didn't make it up right now. So let's go try it out. Nineteen thirty-seven. So that was the fastest drill we've done so far. Let's try it one more time. Two, one. Nineteen forty-seven. That was actually a really fun drill. I might keep that and do that in the future. But now we're going to transition to a different part of the range and do a more fire and maneuver based drill. So let's go check it out. All right, guys. So for this final drill, this is the drill that I've been looking forward to the most. We're going to be doing a fire and maneuver drill using these trees right here as cover to engage that steel target down there. That is a steel ops. If six uh, size steel targets. So big thank you to Steel Ops for providing most of the steel targets you've been seeing me fire at this uh, today on the range. But we're gonna be using these trees as cover. I'm gonna make two hits from each of these trees. So two hits from this side, and then I'm gonna transition shoulders, and then two hits on the other side, and then I'm gonna maneuver to the next tree, do the same thing, the next tree, do the next thing, and then start maneuvering towards the target using these trees as cover. Because I don't see a lot of, I don't know, guys using proper cover on Instagram and stuff like that. And I think it is important to implement this into your training if you're trying to use, you know, your training for what the Second Amendment is meant for. So it should be kind of fun and uh, first time ever running this drill. So let's check it out. All right guys, so first time ever running this drill, we're gonna time it and probably gonna implement this into future videos with different guns. So we'll see how it goes. All right, in three, That was actually kind of a smoker a little bit, but uh, that was actually quite fun. It was a little hard to hear if I was making all those hits through the ear pro and everything. So check it on camera, but I think I might implement that more in future videos. But overall guys, uh, gear is gear as long as you're training in it. it. Doesn't really matter that much. I could be wearing Alice gear and probably get the same effects as I had today. Bottom line is guys, all comes down to training. Doesn't matter what you got. Run what you got and you'll be deadly. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator 
or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel even more directly, I got Patreon, love you guys. You helped me buy guns, gear, ammo, airsoft stuff, all the kind of stuff that goes into running this autistic channel <laughs> and it gets you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.